right. Looks like I'm live here. How's everybody doing? Things to be relevant to the kind of a, a unique subject today, but something that's been on my heart a lot. No sound. Um, can people hear me? Okay. All right. One of you said no sound. I think problems on your end, probably. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start out here with uh, just say where you're where you're from. You can just say you know your local or your area or whatever. Obviously, not your address. Um, so start out that way. If people can see where you're from, um, then you know maybe find other people in your area. That'd be great. Des Moines, Iowa, Texas, Serbia, Van Buren, Arkansas, North Carolina, Oregon, Romania. Oh, that just jumped up there. <laughs> Canton, Ohio, Southeast Michigan, Bristol, New Hampshire, Lithuania, Orlando, Florida, Texas, Ohio, Low from Michigan, uh, Middle Wall, Tennessee, um, Northern Virginia, Trinidad and Tobago, Tennessee, Virginia, Pensacola, Florida area. Western PA, Vidor, Texas, um, Eastern North Carolina, Washington State, Ontario, Canada, Indiana, Bulgaria, Kingston, Ontario, Bulgaria, Ohio, high from the UK, Crete Island, Greece. Sounds good. So, all right, I'm going to get into this this whole uh, subject here and I'm going to go through this quick and then we can have a little bit of a question and answer thing at the end of it um, what is the thing that I hate what I hate about heathens now when I say heathens I'm not talking when the Bible defines heathen it's more of a you go back into the Old Testament especially it's more of a Gentile thing it's just the heathen nations and other just non-Israel is what you see throughout the Old Testament and in the New Testament, it's sort of heathen means just, again, sort of Gentile, un, people that have not heard the gospel, whatever else. Um, <clears throat> that's not what I'm really focusing in on. What I'm focusing in on is the, the picture that I had there from you know, the thumbnail or whatever for this video would be the, the modern heathen, the, the Nordic uh, pagan movement, the Asatru community that put out the, the translation of the Havamal that I have. Um, the people that are into some of the modern heathen type of movement or Wicca or whatever else, pagan types of people. There's one thing that I hate about them, okay? And I do mean hate. Uh, and it's not them, personally. It's not, I don't plan on ever hunting them down and, you know, go take one of my weapons here behind me or something and uh, go, you know, chop their heads off. Or something. No, no. I'm completely nonviolent to... Heathen people, I used to be, when I was in the art world, I knew different people that were into the sort of the heathen, pagan type of thing and whatever. And they were usually fairly decent people to be around. Um, so I don't hate that. I can easily sit down and have a conversation with anybody that's heathen. Um, not a problem. So what's the one thing that I hate about heathens? What I hate about them is many times, uh, most times that I will listen to a heathen broadcast or a video or whatever else, they will say about Christianity being Catholicism. In other words, the Catholic or the, the Christians conquered the Vikings, the Christians, we have a Christian nation, uh, Christian this, Christian that, and they mean Catholic. I hate that. Okay. I just cannot stand that. It drives me nuts. All right. Uh, let me explain. There are three groups within Christianity, if you want to call it that. Um, that would be the Roman Catholics, the Protestant Reformers, and the heretics. Okay. Now, here's the interesting thing about that. If you actually study this thing, um, and actually I saw their one comment there, 
Aaron. Um, yes, atheists do the same thing. Well, the Christians did, you know, had the dark ages and the Christians made the inquisition and that, no, that was a Catholics. <laughs> so, I mean, study history. It's, it's there. And where's the fighting coming from? If we're all just the same, you know, Christianity is, is Catholicism and all offshoots of that. No, no. Why were Catholics putting heretics to death? Okay. Um, Catholics killed heathen people and they also killed heretics. Right. Um, but the, the three groups there, Roman Catholics, the Protestant reformers and the heretics, the Roman Catholics had so much corruption down through the dark ages. Eventually you had Catholics coming out and protesting abuses of Rome and saying, we need re reformation here. We need to reform the Catholic church. And that's why the, the Protestant reformation type churches, be it Lutheran or Episcopalian or, you know, some of the things like that, Presbyterian and, and things, a lot of these that are like Calvinist type of things, a lot of these offshoots of Catholicism are, they keep a lot of Catholicism. They took the church buildings from the Catholic church and they have the altars and they have the priesthood and they have a lot of the things and, and you know, variations of, you know, infant baptism and, and then the transubstantiation, Eucharistic type of thing where it's more than just do this in remembrance of me, like communion, like the Bible teaches. Protestant, uh, the Protestant system is basically Catholic light. And if you want the whole thing, you go to Catholic. <laughs> but the heretics, you study down through the centuries, there have been heretics that the Catholic Church has condemned long before the Protestant Reformation. The Paulicians, the Donatists, you know, you get the Vaudois in, in France and, and uh, the Waldensian people in Italy. There have been heretic groups that were around a lot longer uh, than the Protestants, right? That's what people don't understand. And it's just a very sloppy way to, to handle history. And I've seen a lot of heathens and they'll say, oh, you know, Christians are just, they don't really learn. They're not really all that learned and whatever else. Some are, but a lot of them are just stupid and just, you know, again, you're, you're using a prejudice stereotype, stereotype of Christians. Some of us are very much educated. We have actually studied the issue and we enjoy studying. Um, so I just, I cannot stand that thing. It just drives me nuts. And see, the thing is, you're actually covering up the truth by just lumping us all into Catholicism, right? Uh, my ancestry, going back into the early 1700s here that came to America, they were Anabaptists, which would have been a, a heretic group that both Catholics and Protestants hated, right? That's another thing that a lot of these people don't understand. Um, the Catholics and the Protestants both join in their hatred towards heretic groups. And they actually treat us like heathens. I mean, I literally am treated like a heathen by a lot of people. They say, oh, Denlinger, he's just some nut or whatever else. He's, he's into this crazy stuff or whatever else. And if you would actually sit down and talk to me, heathen people out there, you would actually realize, hey, we probably have a lot in common here. And He's not trying to force me into some kind of a system where I have to go to church and tithe 10% of my income and dress a peculiar way on a Sunday or something. I'm different than that. So I'll be getting back to that here in a little bit. But this is something that's a real big pet peeve of mine because if people would just open their minds, you know. Um, but as I was saying there, Bible believers have no church buildings. Um Again, the Protestants took that from the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholics took it from their ancient pagan Roman system where they, they worshipped uh, Sol Invictus and they, they worshipped a lot of other pagan gods. Um, and they, would, they had these temples where they would worship in. And then they just kind of took Bible names and slapped them on their, their pagan gods and then said, oh, look, we have church buildings now instead of the ancient, uh, you know, Greco-Roman temples where we worship, you know, Ashtaroth and a bunch of other ones. 10% um, tithing. The church buildings teach that thing. There's no teaching in the New Testament about 10% of your income has to go to the church to support the work and all this stuff. That's not there. Uh, Sunday outfits. Special, wear your Sunday best to church when you come to church. Uh, first of all, no Christian ever went to church. Okay, The church is a living body of believers that can meet anywhere. And we actually prefer meeting out in God's creation. Um, but secondly, 
there's no special uniform to wear. When you get into special religious uniforms, you're dealing with Catholicism. I mean, look at the processionals of the Pope and the cardinals and the bishops and all the other stuff, you know. Watch out for men wearing slippers and robes and, you know, out in public and things, you know. Uh, very repulsive. But uh, the other thing we don't have as Bible believers is we don't have all the big university system and the clergy class and all this other stuff. That's not there. We're supposed to there's supposed to be equality within the body of Christ. Now, there are leader positions, certainly, but there's a, we're supposed to submit one to another and have charity and brotherly, brotherly kindness. Um, that's not there in Roman Catholicism. It's just not there. Um, another thing, if again, if the heathen people, and you know, please understand, as we get through this study, I want you to understand who the real enemy is. The real enemy today, and I'm not just talking historically, I'm saying right now, the real enemy to freedom and liberty and everything else, it's that organized religious, religious system um, that dates back to ancient Rome. If you would actually study the Bible-believing movement, if you're heathen and you are watching this, um, we love natural health. Bible believers are very big on natural health. Um, we love independence. Uh, most heathens I've ever met uh, the ones that are into, you know, Nordic heathenism or paganism or witchcraft or whatever else, most of them, most of them just want to be left alone. They're not out there trying to, you know, we're going to take over the whole state and get into the politics and scheme and weasel around so we can start to destroy people. Most of them aren't into that, that I've ever met. Now, there could be ones that are higher level in the New Age movement, whatever, but you'll often see that those are tied back to the Roman Catholic Church, like uh, Pierre Telhard de Chardin the Jesuit priest that actually wrote a lot of New Age materials, the father of the New Age movement, they call it. Pretty disgusting. But, you know, we're, in a, we're into independence. We're into freedom, you know, not Aleister Crowley freedom of do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. But we are into, you know, living free lives. And the biggest thing that heathens need to understand about Bible-believing Christians is we believe in and teach Liberty of conscience. Liberty of conscience is you can do whatever you want according to your conscience. You are free to, to practice what your beliefs are as long as you aren't hurting other people. Right? That's an important distinction. Okay? Um, you say, well, wouldn't that include Catholics? Well, there's some reasons why it doesn't, and I'll get into that. Um, and it's going to be historical. I'm talking, and I will be showing over here, I actually have a official documents of the church in English translation by Jesuit fathers of St. Mary's College. I've showed this thing in different studies. Very important quote from this. This is Catholic. I have their books. I have their catechisms. I have a whole library of Catholic materials. I'm not ignorant. But um, in the Bible, just to kind of prove this, this thing here, Jesus told us to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Um, we're not going to go to all these scripture references today. I'm just going to give you some of them. But uh, Luke chapter 9, or excuse me, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Jesus says, you know, the Great Commission, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what we're supposed to do. Not go and force convert people and get into their system and destroy their culture and whatever else and force them into submission with Rome. And again, understand here what happened historically. Many people don't look at it this way. They think to themselves, well, it's just this religious semantics. I don't talk about politics and religion. But you need to understand a few things. And again, a lot of the heathens and atheists, they have no idea about this stuff. They don't see the fact that ancient imperial Rome morphed and became the Roman Catholic Church. And what was ancient imperial Rome doing? They were going out conquering. They weren't going out and preaching the gospel. They use the gospel as a veil. They say, we're, we're here as missionaries. <laughs> what they really mean is, we're here to conquer you. We're just going to come in and we're going to make you, force you into being, you know, Catholic. And then once we do that, then uh, then we get control of your country. And that's what they do. I mean, it's when you understand the, the history of Roman Catholicism and how they went from Rome, Imperial Rome, to Roman the Roman Catholic Church, and the conquering and the scheming and the, the military things and everything else, it boggles your mind how big this conspiracy has been. So 
we are supposed to preach the gospel. Again, if you are my neighbor as a heathen, whatever branch of it, you're some Norse pagan and whatever else, you, you're into Odin and you, you wear Thor's hammer around your neck and whatever else, and you're my neighbor, hey, you want to talk about the Bible? You want to talk about heaven? Going Where do you go when you die? Whatever else? Sure, fine. Uh, if you don't, okay. I'm not going to come and burn your house down, okay? Or, or put you through some kind of a torture until I finally get a confession out of you. That's Roman Catholicism. And again, that's what I hate when I hear this thing of, you know, heathens and they say, oh, you know, the Christians did this horrible stuff to Europe. And no, the Catholics did it. Stop saying Christian. Okay, they're not Christian. Another thing, Luke chapter 9, verse 5, talks about, you know, if, if they don't receive you, Jesus speaking to his disciples, if you go into a city, they don't receive you, you shake off the dust of your feet as a testimony against them, and you go away. And judgment, God will judge them. But again, how does this line up with Roman Catholicism? You see, it doesn't. Roman Catholicism says we're going to take over cities. We're going to fight and we're going to wage war. And, you know, I've been studying the ancient imperial Rome and all the all the different expansion, expanding into this territory and into that territory and moving up into Germania and the Britannia and, and they're moving into here and then they, they're having problems in this part of the kingdom and then the West Kingdom and the East and they break up and then there's, the, you know, this emperor is coming up, just fighting and warring all the time. That's what Rome's history has been. And if you study Roman Catholicism, it's the same thing. They just kind of ramp it up a little bit. Now they have so many more levels of deception and everything else. They still use a lot of the same techniques, though, which is interesting. Another thing that heathens don't understand that I will say here, and if you're a heathen, please listen to what I'm saying. I've already kind of been referring to this, but I'll give you the scriptures that you can look this stuff up. Um, heathens don't understand fifth kingdom truth. What is that? What is fifth kingdom truth? Well, if you study the book of Daniel, in the Old Testament, Daniel chapter 2, verses 40 through 5, it shows the transition from these legs of iron. Daniel sees, well, Nebuchadnezzar sees this. He has this dream. It's a vision for the future, that there would be five world governments, okay? And there's the head of gold, and then there's the chest of silver, or the uh, arms of silver, I think it is, and then the chest of brass, and then the legs of iron. That's the important one there. The iron legions of Rome. That's literally, literally what they called themselves. And they were very powerful, extremely powerful. Now, a lot of prophecy teachers will say that there's that there's a when Rome fell in you know the fourth century or so, right in there, that there's a break and then it waits, and then in the end times, the fifth kingdom is going to show up again, the one that's part iron, part miry clay. And you know, and I saw somebody in the comments, by the way, one of my videos. Somebody said, oh, the Bible is ridiculous because it says that iron is not mixed with clay, but you can you know, melt the two and you can make a, some kind of a steel and whatever else. It's talking about mixing them together. It's not talking about in a furnace. Okay, so just had to kick that little thing there for a minute. But the Bible speaks of this fifth kingdom. And a lot of prophecy teachers say it comes in the end times. I don't believe that. I believe because you see gold transitions to silver. There's no time in between there. Silver transitions into brass. Brass transitions into iron. Right? There's no tr there's no time of thousands of years between the two kingdoms. No, it's one kingdom is falling and another one is starting. So I believe the iron legions of Rome transition into the ten toes, the part iron, part miry clay. And it's kind of interesting because man, our bodies are are chemically very similar to clay. Out of the dust of the earth were formed according to the scriptures. Genesis chapter 1. Um, and it's interesting because what do you have? You have iron, the Rome, iron legions of Rome, and then you have the clay, the iron and the clay. And what, what do you have with clay? It's people. And the Bible says that the whore upon which the woman sitteth are peoples and tongues and nations and whatever else in Revelation 17. Hmm. So this huge group of people and clay are mixed. Roman Catholic. Catholic meaning it's a Greek pagan term for, or philosophical term, I should say, pagan. <laughs> it means universal. So you have the merging of Rome and Catholicism. You see? It's an interesting thing there. So 
the fifth kingdom got started, I would say about the fourth century or so. Um, again, you can study all the history of that thing. And what did you have? Well, you had Pontificus Maximus, the Roman emperor. Okay, what did he become? He became the supreme pontiff. Hmm, the pope. Then you had the Roman Senate that oftentimes would try to overthrow, you know, the Caesar or the emperor or whatever they were calling him at the time. Julius Caesar, you know, et tu brute and all that stuff or his friend Brutus and, and the and the uh, Roman Senate, you know, they, they stab him and they, they kill him and everything else. And there's this great conspiracy to kill, you know, Julius Caesar. At, you, know, you see that all the time if you study Roman history, you know, of Imperial Rome. But uh, you have the Roman Senate, and what do we have now? We have the College of Cardinals. Hmm. And you can study some of the stuff too. Avra Manhattan wrote some things about, you know, some of the conspiracy stuff there within the Vatican, and they're actually killing popes sometimes. And then you have the Roman legions. These you know, militaries that are going out there. Well, what do you have throughout history? Well, you have the Roman crusaders these huge armies that they're going out there and they're fighting with Islam and they're fighting with, you know, the barbaric people and everything else, which my ancestors are barbarians. I'm not, you know, Roman by any means. So, you know, again, all, all heathens are just no good and whatever. Well, I was a heathen at one point in time. My ancestors were heathens. You go back to the old Testament. So I do have love in my heart for the heathen people. Um, and of course, today you also have, it was the Crusaders through the Dark Ages, but then today you have Catholic knighthoods and all these guys in high levels of politics and, and uh, industry and whatever else, and big businessmen and banking and whatever else. And a lot of these guys, they get, I know somebody rebuked me re recently too, because I say whatever else. It's just, <laughs> I'm just, it's my way of saying there's a whole lot more I could say, but I, for sake of time, you know, so I'm. I apologize if I've offended anybody by saying whatever else, but just to explain it there. Um, but you have Catholic knighthoods. And again, look at the politicians. Look at your politicians. Are these guys Catholic? Or are they women? Are they Catholic? Are they Jesuit trained? Or did they go to Catholic schools and whatever else? Are they going and bowing down before the Pope? Special audience with the Pope. Why? Why are they going to the Pope? Supreme Pontiff? Think about it. Think about it. The fifth kingdom's right before your eyes. Many people aren't seeing it. Ancient Germania. Again, that was one of the big ones that they were always fighting with the, you know, the Saxons and the um, Teut uh, Teutons, Teutones, I think they were called way back when, and uh, the Franks. And there was, there was a bunch of other tribes there in Germania. And it's so funny because, you know, all the barbarians were, you know, coming and attacking the Roman, you know, areas, the Roman lands, which just as I'm studying this thing, I'm just laughing and saying, no, the, the ancient Germanic people were saying, hey, get off our property. You know, we, we used to come down south here, you know, during the winter, we'll come down south and kind of come down to the coast there and do some fishing and whatever else. They're nomadic people, you know, and all of a sudden they come in and, huh, Roman occupied territory? No, this is our land. What do you mean? You get off of here. And so they're fighting with the Romans. You know, the Romans didn't own that land. But this documentary I was watching, one of the things I, I was, you know, studying through and whatever else, um, they had a number of Jesuit professors, literally a pro professor from uh, Holy Cross and another professor from, um, oh, it wasn't Boston College, uh, Loyola Marymount. Yeah, Jesuit professors, and they're talking about these barbarians and how that they came into Roman territories and were fighting against the, you know, heroic Roman people. <laughs> Yeah, um, but it's interesting because if you study again, ancient Germania, eventually in about 800 AD, it became the holy what? Roman Empire under Charlemagne. Why would they call Germania Roman if the Roman Imperial Rome was gone? Hmm. And I'm just going to show you something from this Catholic source over here. The thing of Rome having two swords. If you're heathen, please pay very special heed to this one. This is a very important one. This is page 74 of the church teaches. Okay. 
We are taught by the words of the gospel that in this church and under its control, there are two swords, the spiritual and the temporal. Both of these, that is the spiritual and the temporal swords, are under the control of the church. There's not one verse of scripture that talks about this stuff, by the way. They're lying. When we read the Bible, read a King James Bible. Don't waste your time with the other ones. I mean, this one here, King James Bible, my old King James Bible, it's all worn off on the end there, so you can't really see King James Version anymore. But um, this one here comes from the Christians, the heretics. Okay, the other ones, the NIV and all that other stuff, they, they come from the Vatican, ultimately, if you go through the whole study, which I have in other videos. But um, read the King James Bible and the Gospels. You aren't going to see anything about the, the two swords and you can go out and conquer people. and you know Study the teachings of Jesus Christ and compare them to the Catholic Church. They're not the same. Um, both of these, that is the spiritual and the temporal swords, are under the control of the church. The first is wielded by the church. The second is wielded on behalf of the church. The first is wielded by the hand of the priest, the spiritual sword. Okay, which they're trying to claim this is this book, the sword of the spirit, which the priests don't wield. It's kind of funny. They lied again. Um, all the priests are wielding the, the holy scriptures. No, they're not. It's church tradition. Church tradition trumps sacred scripture, according to official Catholic doctrine. Um, the first is wielded by the church. The second is wielded on behalf of the church. The first is wielded by the hand of the priest. The second by the hand of kings and soldiers, but at the wish and by the permission of the priests. Okay? Who is in real control then of the politics of this world? Right there it is. You can see it. Wait till it focuses. Come on, focus for me. It's taking forever to focus. Come on here. I apologize. I don't know why it's not focusing. Hopefully you can read that. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to pull it back a little bit or something. Down there. Right in there. Why is it not focusing? I don't know. It's fairly cold in the room here right now. Not even uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So, uh, But... Oh man, is it important to understand this? And again, I, I've seen heathens and they just don't get it. They don't understand this whole thing of this, the fact that the Catholic Church is waging war on the free peoples. The pandemic was a papal interdict. Okay, study what a historical interdict is, how they shut down the churches and they shut down the businesses and they everything grinds to a halt until the Catholic Church gets its way. Hmm. The whole world got shut down in 2020. There were only a few uh, political leaders that stood up against it. And ironically, they were all black. Black African. Yeah, I think the one guy was in Haiti or something like that. So he wasn't African per se in terms of in Africa. But five, I think, five black leaders around the world. They were the only ones that had character enough. And one of them was a Roman Catholic. That's the funny thing. And they killed that guy. So, you know, the Catholic Church doesn't care if you're part of the system. If you go against an interdict, you're dead. You're gone. But uh, so what do we have? The spiritual. The Catholic Church teaches that it is the only true church. All, of, all other churches are to be subject to their spiritual authority. Again, I can prove that. The temporal on the other hand, is that the priests and the Catholics, be they Jesuits or Catholic priests or knighthoods or whatever else, they control the different uh, politicians out there. You know, at the time that the whole thing happened there in 2020, we had Donald Trump. Donald Trump is trained, he was trained at Fordham University. So according to the teachings of the Catholic Church, if you go to a Jesuit school, you are part of the Jesuit family. That's why I call him a Jesuit. I know he's not a Jesuit priest. But he's a you know a coadjutor, a temporal coadjutor. In other words, he helps out with what the Catholic Church is doing, trying to achieve. Um, Joe Biden has uh, sent his children off to Jesuit schools, and he's received numerous um, honorary degrees from Jesuit schools. The Jesuits again understand this. If you're new to the whole thing, 
The Jesuit order was formed in the 16th century, 1540 to be exact, I think was the year, um, by Ignatius de Loyola. And I say it the Spanish way, Ignatius, not Ignatius, but, you know, A-A-E-O-U, if you understand the Spanish uh, vowel pronunciation. That's why I say it that way, Ignatius. Um, but he was a Spanish member, a member of Spanish royalty. He was a Basque, actually. And he formed this society, these, and they were basically soldiers for the Pope to go out and, and destroy the Protestant Reformation, and of course, to put heretics de to death, and liberals as well, which liberal in their system means, you know, Catholics that are not radical, crazy people. And you'll meet those, okay? I've met some really fine Catholic people. They're not all just blood-dripping, savage, you know, Roman people wanting to kill any heretic. Of course, they're not. But uh, so uh, another thing I had to mention there. But um, if you look into the whole, whole thing, like I was saying, you will see that most politicians are Catholic. And you'll see, you start to realize, oh, wow, the kind of control that the Catholic Church has right now, or Rome has the fifth kingdom. Um, you'll start to realize, oh, yeah, the Bible's right. And uh, by covering it up, um, the heathen people that I've seen that cover that up and they just use the word Christian instead of saying Catholic, it's usually because they're either ignorant or because they are afraid. They're cowards. They don't want to actually come out and say Catholic because they understand how strong Catholicism is in their country. And they've been so whipped over the years that now they're, you know, Europeans I'm mostly speaking about here. They realize if I say anything, I'm going to get in trouble. I've had people from other countries, and they said, Brother Brian, if you were in our country, you'd be in prison for stuff you've said. Um, my ancestors came here to America for religious liberty, and I'm going to continue to fight for that. And I will uh, use my voice to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and to go against the Roman system as long as I am able. And I don't care what it costs me. Um, but Galatians chapter 2, verse 9. I'm going to go there real quick. Um, what should be our attitude towards these heathen people? Well, first and foremost, we have to say, if they say, well, the Christians have done this and the Christians have done that, um, define what you mean by Christian. Because they're talking about Catholicism. Um, no Bible-believing uh, heretic has ever put a heathen to death. Ever. And we never will. If I see you someplace, I'm not going to pull a sword out and go run over and chop your arm off or something. I'm not going to do that. Um, I mean, forced conversion in our minds as Bible believers, a forced conversion is a false conversion. It's not true salvation. We're against the whole thing of going to church buildings and they, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one are looking around. If you'd like to be pray or say, pray this prayer, we're against that stuff. It's a personal relationship is what we believe in. Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, reading out of my King James Bible. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. So they're going to go, so there's disciples of Jesus there. Um, you have uh, James, Cephas, Cephas is another name for Peter, and John. And they're going to the circumcision, to the Jews. And Paul and Barnabas are sent to the heathen to convert them and to force them into submission <laughs> and to take over their country and, and, you know, build Catholic churches all over their country that you're forced to come to. No, we're going to put Christian leaders in your country and, and force you to do certain things and shut things down when the Pope decides to make an interdict. No, stop calling that stuff Christian. It's not Christian. The Catholics stole the term Christian from us. Christian is a Bible word, and it's applied to people like us, Bible-believing Christians. It's a sick and tired of that. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. And here's another point I need to raise. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I would stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did, he did eat with the Gentiles, with the Gentiles tripped over myself here but when they were come he withdrew and separated himself fearing them which were of the circumcision and the other jews dissembled likewise with him insomuch that barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation 
Simulation is another way of saying hypocrisy. You're faking things. Okay, oh, we're for the Gentiles and they can get saved and then you, you know, pull away from them. Um, verse 14, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? What's the New Testament? What's the gospel that Jesus Christ said to go preach? Salvation, not forced conversion, not Judaism. The Jewish disciples weren't supposed to be preaching Judaism. They weren't supposed to come and say, hey, okay, you're a, from Germania, ancient Germania. Congratulations. You have to look like us and dress like us and act like us and eat our foods and celebrate our special feast days and, and give up everything about yourself you have to become a jew in order to be saved peter was leaning towards that he was saying you know he's compelling these gentiles to act like they're jewish and paul rebukes him to the face and says that's not what the gospel is about you're not walking according to the truth of the gospel god doesn't want us to give up our culture god doesn't want us to give up our ancestry you know when that happened way back when in the Tower of Babel, do you remember that back in the book of Genesis, chapter uh, 10, I think it is, where they're talking about all the different, you know, children of, of uh, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, were the three sons, and they're going, and this one, you know, goes here, and this one goes there. You get back to it here real quick. Genesis chapter 10, I think, is where they're talking about which son went where. Um, yeah. And then Genesis chapter 11, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore it is, is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Who created culture? Who created the different people? God did. So why on earth would he bring in salvation and say, I'm going to force all of you people out there, you heathen, that Paul and Barnabas are sent to, I'm going to force you to become Jews. And now you have to be Torah observant and all this and start saying Yeshua instead of Jesus and all this other stuff. No, no, that's not what the Lord did. So again, oh, I'm, I'm into Nordic paganism or whatever else, and I don't want to go to church and, and you know, and do whatever else and things and, and look like a, you know, I have to become a Jew or something. No, no, no. You give up the things that the Bible condemns. And if the Bible does not have a clear condemnation of what you're doing or your culture or your customs or things that you're eating or whatever else, then you keep doing it and you're fine. I don't want to act like an African. Why? Oh, because I hate Africans. No, I love the African people. I love their culture. They have some really neat cultural stuff over there in Africa, but that's for them. I don't want to get, you know, become a Japanese person, start, you know, have my wife dress in a, what do you call it, a kimono or something. No, that stuff's beautiful, but it's for them. And, you know, another thing I've heard, they say, um, well, you know, I'm a pagan Nordic, you know, heathen, and, and uh, what would I want with a sort of the, uh, Middle Eastern, you know, shepherd's religion or something, this God of the shepherds, or you're quite ignorant. Okay, he's the God of the universe. He revealed himself to Abraham. We'll see that here in a minute. But that doesn't mean that he's some kind of a, you know, he's for the people that live out in tents out in the, you know, desert or something like that and the, that are shepherds. No, that's not it at all. And actually, if you study it, um, Odin has basically he's a he's a a lot of the things i believe are plagiarized from the bible that snorri sturlson 
you know, wrote stories Thurlson who had converted to Catholicism. Oh no, he became a Christian. Oh, <laughs> Make me gag. Um, so we're not supposed to give up our culture. All right. So um, there's some really rich, beautiful cultures and customs that we need to respect about each other. That's true diversity. Galatians chapter 3, verses 8 through 9 says, uh, did I get that one right? Yeah. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, and these shall all nations be blessed. Not all the sheep herders and whatever else. No, all nations will be blessed through what God's doing there and showing through Abraham. Abraham, again, typology throughout the Bible. A lot of people don't understand that that are lost. It's kind of a higher level thing that you'll understand when you get saved. The Holy Spirit has to show you some things. But um, the, uh, the thing of Abraham, he's a type of God. Uh, and it's an interesting study there. But in, in Abraham shall all nations be blessed. Verse 9, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. I'm not a Jew. Some people think I look like a Jew, and they act, say I act like a Jew, and you know some kind of Jewish rabbi or something. I'm not a Jew, okay? Um, Denklinger is my original last name. Denlinger, it was changed to Denlinger after we moved here to America, 1720, is officially when the Denklinger family came here. Um, but, you know, you trace back my ancestry, it goes back to Bavaria for the Denklingers. And then um, my, my paternal grandmother, she was a brew baker. So that's kind of German Swiss, you know. And then my uh, maternal grandfather was a Fry, F R E Y. And then my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, was a Campbell, so Scottish Highlander. Um, so I'm Northern European. And you go back through and it's, you know, and, uh, my other family names and everything else. Um, it's all German and Scotch-Irish and whatever else. Uh, there's no Jewish blood in me, you know. So, and a lot of my siblings are blue-eyed and blonde-haired and everything else. I'm kind of the oddball with the dark eyes and the dark hair. I think the Lord just, you know, created me this way just so I could play a joke on people when he called me into the ministry all these years later because people think I'm Jewish. I'm not. <laughs> And, you know, oh, you, you need to get genealogy tests and whatever. What's that going to prove? But um, one other thing we'll go to here before I just, you know, before I end this little thing here. Um, Psalm chapter 48, or well, Psalm 48, excuse me. There are no chapters, Psalms. Psalm 48, you say, is, is, uh, is Christianity true Christianity? Is it compatible with? Um, people living in the north, the Nordic type people, is it compatible? Psalm 48, verse 1 and 2. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. God likes mountains. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Um, you study what God is and where God is, he's in the north. So don't give me this stuff of, well, I just can't relate to the God of the Bible because it's sort of a, you know, Middle Eastern God or whatever else. No, actually it's not. Okay. God made a special covenant with Abraham. Um, but that doesn't mean that he's just located over there and whatever else. And like I said, um, study, you know, the ancient Nordic type people's history and everything else. A lot of it's been erased. By the Catholic Church. Um, they have a real uh, sick thing about them where they come into a country and they conquer and then they burn and destroy all the records of those people. They want to erase your history and your culture. Hmm. Why? Well, because it's uh, based on the ancient Roman system of conquering people. That's what it's based on. You're no longer uh, from Germania. You're from the Roman area of, you know, the, the northern Roman area. You're no longer from, you know, Syria or something. No, you're from this part of Rome or whatever. So um, 
it's something we have to fight, brethren, because it it's a, you know you talk about prejudice. I mean, we 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 get so much you know prejudice against us and whatever else. You know the things that people put on us. It's amazing. Um, but you know this this whole prejudiced thing of you know the Christians did this and the Christians did that, and you know they're talking about Catholicism and uh we just have to get to a point where we say okay define what you're talking about what do you what do you mean by christian and say okay we're not catholic right our system we did not come from catholicism we're not protestants right we are heretics according to the catholic church and according to the protestants as well and to end on that note I want to announce something finally um, that uh, definitely is going to get me the label heretic and uh, heathen probably too. Um, my book is done and my book is now available. Um, and now for the grand unveiling of my book, I could do a special video, but I thought, hey, it'd be good just to put this thing right at the end. So, ready, drum roll whatever <laughs> here is the new book the godhead doctrine right there it is on the back cover i have scripture there matthew chapter 11 verse 27 all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son but the father neither knoweth any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him a lot of people don't know god the father they don't understand who he is so um this is the very first copy the original copy this is the original autograph <laughs> um but you can see the kind of the text there the size it's a really good size i think it's 12 number 12 font or something um brother jacob thompson over at the wine press news he was the one that uh he was my official formatter whatever he edited the thing for me Got the pages all worked out. It's um, it's got. Let me see here. That's the inside of it, right there. And copyright page over here, and the table of contents right there. You can see that right there. Jesus. There's three sections with seven chapters each. For a reason if you understand Bible numbers. Um, but you have the first section there is Jesus Christ as God the Father in the Old Testament, second section, Jesus Christ as God the Father in the New Testament. Um, and then finally the common common Trinitarians Trinitarian attacks on Jesus. So um this was a lot of work. And uh so it's available over at lulu.com. Um you can type it in. It was kind of weird yesterday um, talking with uh, Brother Jacob. We were going through the whole thing, and we tried to find it on the bookstore because I found four spelling errors in here, so we had to go back and redo that. Everything should be good now. And um, we went to look it up on, on Lulu, and for some reason, I guess when we were originally going through it, I must have clicked on something, and it, and it, uh, it, it was – clicked on it that it had explicit content and so we went we did the search for it and, and, uh, and i didn't come up the godhead doctrine didn't come up and i thought okay and so i typed in my name and it said there's one book by brian denlinger but it has explicit it's explicit content you have to prove that you're 18 or older i thought what and i typed in yeah i'm 18 you know the date of birth and all that stuff and it came up with this and i thought huh so we went in and, and we reset it and everything but it was just kind of a you know it was checked that you know explicit content so we had to go in and redo that and then it wasn't coming up you know still after that but then today him and i both went and checked the website so it's there um yeah it's there for people if, if you want to buy it or whatever else um so i just thought i'm going to write something I, i'd like to eventually do self-publishing where i'm you know making lower cost things and whatever else but um i thought i'll just going to actually go with a printed book and 
something that just destroys the whole Trinity thing. And like I said in the introduction of the book, um, I'll just give you a little hint as to what this whole thing is about. Um, you know, Brother Jacob, uh, thinking I don't, okay, I don't think I have his book right here beside me. Um, I was keeping it over here, but his book on, on the Godhead issue, um, he covers all the bases. He goes over all the different arguments and everything else. And it's great, but I thought, you know, I want to have something that's a little bit more condensed to the point and boom, you know, I read this thing in a few hours as I was proofreading it. So you can get through it pretty quickly. But um, I just wanted to really narrow in on the real big points about everything, about the Godhead doctrine. So um, that's what I did. I didn't answer every argument. I didn't go over every scripture, whatever else, but there's still a lot in there. So um, check it out if you want to. There is no ebook. Again, I'm not bringing it out as an ebook. Um, simply because you know then you get one goon that buys it and then they just share it with a whole bunch of other ones not doing that and you know i like i'm very much for the thing of printed materials so i don't like e-bibles or whatever else you know I, you need to have a printed bible so, so now I'm a, I'm, I'm a published author now i have written other books but they never went to print here's another one uh, i used to print these myself right there my little spiral bound thing you can see that's way back long time ago hopeland pa <laughs> that's not the ministry address anymore i'll take that down unless somebody think it is but i went over um 20, different references to the niv tniv king james version and compared you know fathers and the king james and the tniv how they have to change that the whole gender inclusive thing and whatever else so I used to sell these on my website um, again there's the thing on the back some different scriptures I used to sell these but it was just so much work printing these out myself um, so but yeah here's a uh, there's the introduction to some of the stuff and then here's the um, my graph I made yeah this way Oops, my hand over it there. So, um, and then of course the NIV, they came out with their 2011 NIV, which pretty much rendered all my work useless because uh, they did away with the TNIV and the original NIV. So, and they changed a bunch more stuff. So, kind of an interesting timing thing there. This came out before that, and uh, then they did their thing and yeah um but i wrote that and i wrote another this is the first thing i ever wrote um that little thing there which i've shared in other studies so um just a thing on the bible version issue this is even before i was had a you know website or anything else so i was giving those things out to people when i was going to baptist churches many years ago and um, I look back at that time, and I think I was so stupid. Man, I was so dumb, so naive. You know, I just thought, you know, Baptists, they used nothing but the King James Bible. They're all saved. None of them would get mad at me for this information. And I'm just going to be loved for this, you know, for defending the word of God. Boy, was I shocked. Uh, didn't quite go that way. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, anyhow, um, but uh, just wanted to put that little study together for the heathen people out there um, and for all of us as Bible believers. We need to make sure that we distance ourselves from the Roman Catholic Church. Um, they're not Christians, and they never have been. So, um, I guess we can do some questions now. I, I've seen there's a lot of comments going while I'm doing my study, and I love to be able to read everything but um didn't get to actually see any of the comments there so um does anybody have any questions if you when you do a question we've done this many times just write question in all capital letters and then your question after that 
and that way it's easier for me to see it. So if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and uh, fire away. Unrelated question. It doesn't have to be related to the study, by the way. Do you believe the intelligence agencies use child soldiers? Well, you get into some of the human stuff. Um, they might. I don't know. That's, a, that's actually a very good question. I don't know. Um, you know, children of the military officers and whatever, they, they might. What is your opinion on the Eastern Orthodox Church? Haven't studied enough in depth to really comment a whole lot. I know that they use the, uh, a lot of the Greek Orthodox churches are using the Nestle Alon now so but i haven't studied enough to really make a real good thing on that okay. brian have you seen the channel service christie he exposes catholic ecumenical connections of many pastors such as john MacArthur and james white no i haven't um let me write that down uh, i have not heard about that that's interesting yeah I'm sorry to interrupt, but my weakness order was delivered to Alex. What do I do about this? Um, it was supposed to be delivered here, and I checked both places. Nothing gave sense. Signed by Alex. What do I do about this? Emergency. I don't know. We'll have to talk about it until the live stream here. My wife uh, just informed me that one of the things that she ordered, um, one of her computer parts, uh, I think actually just went to a neighbor and they signed for it. I don't know what the deal is on that one. Um, can I prove the NIV was written by that lesbian and that nose Jesuit? Uh, it wasn't written by a lesbian. She was just a stylist, Virginia Mullencott, and uh, there were Jesuits that helped out with it. But uh, can any saved man perform a marriage coverture? Yes. Um, Question, why don't you use email? Because when I stopped doing the email account thing, I was getting about 400 a day. Um, it was making me go crazy. Okay, I can't handle the emailing huge amount that comes in through this ministry. Question on Ruckman's study of Job. Why does he think God resurrected Job's children? I read it and I could see how he came. Could see how he came. I think maybe he could not see how he came to that idea. Yeah, it's, it's his interpretation of the thing. Um, it's an interesting way to look at it. Um, I think it's kind of more of a turns into the thing of, you know, what's going to happen to a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble, and whatever. So, uh, why don't you have a house church, small one, that is where a lot of us uh, grew up. Um, right now we don't have a house church simply because, um, we still don't really know that many people in the area and all we do is work all the time. You know, we're here a lot answering people's questions live or not live streaming but uh, you know Skype conversations with people and whatever else just finished a book so um, did the Catholic Church use Christianity against the natives I guess you're saying to hate God uh, yes um, the Catholic Church they one of their masterful techniques is they do some really evil stuff because most of them are atheists and I mean really, truly atheists. There's some that really devoutly believe what they're doing is right, and they actually believe in God and Jesus and whatever. Um, but most Catholic priests and whatever else, they're just atheists. And so they go in and they do horrible things to children and whatever, knowing that they'll, when those children grow up, they'll become atheists. They'll hate God. And so they do it to the, the Native people, especially here in America, North America, be it America and Canada. Um Did you get my email? What did you think about the video? Uh, not sure which one you're talking about. Um, Matthew 24, 38, 1 Timothy 4, 3. The abstaining from meats thing is starting to come in. The marriage part, not so much. Before Tom Jacob's shovel, is there a time, peace and safety before things fall? Um, certainly, I believe that the uh, 
you know, the meat thing definitely. They're coming up with all kinds of substitute meat stuff and whatever else. It's crazy. Um, and the marriage thing, you know, you get into some of that, you know, um, abstaining from, uh, that's not, it's, the thing of just being single, you know, forced celibacy. I think we'll see more of that as time goes by. Different ways to look at that. Um, you know, the time of peace and safety, I think that there's going to be a lot of war and a lot of death in our very near future. And when it ends, then that time there, you know, will be lead into the Antichrist showing up, is what I believe. Um, other than the wine press news, what other sources do you tend to use for news? Um, there's a lot of guys on YouTube, secular people mostly that I'm watching, where they're economists and whatever else. Um, and I don't watch Gerald Salente anymore, Trends Journal. I used to, but the guy's got such a foul mouth, and he's into this whole, you know, universal church of peace and love or whatever the thing's called. I don't waste time on that guy, but a lot of uh, secular sources and things on, on the economy, um, things like that is what I'll do. Um, <clears throat> question. If we are grafted into the olive tree with the Jews, and are we not Jewish and therefore going through the time of Jacob's trouble? <laughs> Where's the Antichrist? Where's the mark of the beast? Where are the seal judgments, the trumpets, the, the yeah, no, we're not. Um, what about the female angels in Zechariah? They're not called angels. Okay, they're wings, they are women with the wings of storks. It doesn't say that they're angels. And he says, I he sees wickedness. So Genesis chapter 10 talk about the different people and tongues, and chapter 11 talks about the whole earth was of one language. What are the differences between languages and tongues? Um, spelling. That's basically it. I mean, you can probably make some arguments and whatever else, but language and tongues is pretty much the same things in the Bible. The um, question is, the destruction of Babylon in Revelation 18, talking about both mystery of Babylon and Babylon and Mesopotamia. Um, that's a good question. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think that, you know, that's a that's a more difficult one. I'd have to get into that a little bit more um, because it definitely looks like it's, you know, geographic Babylon as well as, you know, because Mystery Babylon sort of Revelation 17, 18, you know, could be more of the physical. I've heard some of both, but that's a good question. Question, Christ, Christ Mass, is that not man-made tradition? Or is it scriptural? Um, absolutely not scriptural. There's nothing in the Bible about Christmas or whatever else. But if you were listening to the study I did today, um, Paul rebuked Peter for having Peter or Peter trying to make Gentiles act like Jews. We're not supposed to give up our culture. God doesn't want us all in one amalgamated big mess and whatever else. That's not there. Um, Christmas can be very bad. It can be very wicked. You get into a lot of the materialism and whatever else and and Santa Claus and all this other stuff, you can take Christmas and make it into something really evil. You can take alcohol and get drunk. Well, then you shouldn't have alcohol. Well, there are certain people that can taste very fine forms of fermented, you know, beverages. I mean, I don't drink alcohol in terms of wine or whiskey or beer or anything else like that, but I drink kombucha because it's good for my health. It's a fermented food, a fermented drink, um, but it's slightly alcoholic. It's a very small alcoholic content. So you can, you can get into all this weird stuff. I don't do Christmas on the sense of, you know, Santa Claus and all kinds of just getting into massive debt to you know, make my child a, a nice brat or something. Uh, no. Um, you have to think about that stuff. Question. I may leave the university due to V. I'd like to make an open letter, let the people know about my Christian position. I want to, um, I don't know what that was. What scripture could you help me with that? Um, your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay, you can't put the hokey pokey into it. You know, the hokey pokey. You can't put that into it. Um, Jesus said, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. Okay, Mark 2, 14. You don't put, you know, disease you don't inoculate yourself with disease um before you're sick you know to prevent getting sick or something no you don't do that there's a i have a study on rumble about the thing of uh the serious sin of vaccination so uh let's see down here 
Um, where's your dog? Down underneath the desk. I have a heater down here, sort of an infrared heater. And it's, you know, it kind of warms up underneath my desk there. And, and he just takes over the whole thing. He's laying down there in the, in the heat. Question, can a woman baptize a man if no man is available? Uh, <laughs> you know, I get into these things, you know, and, and whatever. I don't know the whole situation. I have no idea. Um, I don't think that there's anything in Scripture that would directly condemn that. I'll just say it that way. Um, but, you know, what about this? What about that? Well, I don't know your situation. Um, question, did King Solomon die as a saved man? That's debatable. Uh, his wives turned his heart away after other gods. Different guys that, uh, you know, went after other gods, they, you know, they went to hell. So, debatable. Um, question, could the trees in the Garden of Eden represent lines of knowledge? If so, feeding the sheep should mean leading them on the right path of knowledge. Just an idea I've had for a while. Um, never really thought about that. That's an interesting point. I'd have to give that some more thought. Um, question, thoughts on Charles Stanley. I listened to him early on, but your video the other day about divorce preacher sealed the deal for me. He uses new versions. He's a faker. Um, I don't trust any guy that goes to the Vatican to get his Bible. All right. Um, and he's divorced. You know, that's a big problem. Uh, is there a resurrection at the end of the uh, time of Jacob's trouble? Um, I, I think... I tend to believe that no. I believe that it's actually going to be at the end of the millennial kingdom. Brother, can you do a video on comparing biblical slavery compared to non-biblical slavery? Um, I don't know if I ever if I brought that up in my study on slavery. Does the Bible teach racism or slavery or something? I forget what that thing was called. I don't remember. I might have covered it in that one. Um, do you have any ideas, thoughts on of what's the next few months? Or what the next few months could look like. Um, no. And uh, nobody does, quite frankly, because um, there's the, there's a very good question. Um, there are certain things that they can do with the economy, you know, they, they being Rome um, and the legions of Rome, <laughs> um, they can do certain things with forced mandated things, you know, mandating the hokey pokey and whatever. Uh, they can do that. They can take away more freedom. They can do whatever. But it's all up to the people, how the people react. Um, I'm actually planning to do a study. It's going to be a big one on certain prophecies for the end times that are set in stone. They will happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, and then there's other things that are happening in the end times that you can do something about. Um, so that would be, you know, What's it going to be? Well, people are dying um, at an alarming rate. Um, literally just went up the road the other day, just going home from work here, and um, there was a truck along the road, and some people were coming up behind him. So he was in the other lane. I went past and I looked over, and there's an older guy, and he's just like that, you know, just like he was dead, just sitting there along the road. And I thought, whoa, okay. And, you know, there was a bunch of other cars, and they were slowing down. You know, and I thought, well, they're in a better position to check on him than I am. And um, so, you know, more death. There could be fighting. There could be some kind of a thing that would happen that would cause, that would spark civil war or even World War III. I don't know. Good question. Very good question. Just something we need to pray about. Question. Is there a special significance to why God changed the names of Abraham, Sarah, Jacob, Peter, Paul, etc.? That's a good question, too. Boy, I don't know. That's that's not a good one. Or, excuse me. That is a good one. I don't know on that one. Question. I am I'm not ignorant and have studied many religions. Why do Christians say it's divination? I don't practice it, but it helped in Rico using the false religion lies fed to me. Um, not really sure what you're referring to there or what you're talking about there. Um
Okay, question. If when we die, uh, we are immediately with God, what does it mean when the dead in Christ shall rise first? Our soul and our spirit go up to be with the Lord. The body is what is awaiting that resurrection when we become incorruptible. Um, question. Can you give different ways how to witness to people? Um, I did a video on that, I think, at one point in time. But uh, the main thing is just to pray that the Lord opens up a door of utterance and a door of opportunity where you can talk to somebody. Um, question. Revelation 22, verse 5. Who is reigning forever and ever? Meaning, will there be people still in the flesh like here during the 1,000 years? Uh, yeah, I do believe that there will be people that make it through the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, there will be the saints that if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Um, certainly we'll be coming back with the Lord. Um, I know Joey Faust, the, some Baptist preacher, and he's one of the ones that's moved out to the Ozarks and they have a commune there now and whatever else, preparing for the end times and whatnot. Um, and he teaches that if you're a good Christian, you'll be reigning with Jesus. And if you're a bad Christian, you go to hell for the thousand year reign, which I think is ridiculous. Um, so, uh, there will be people ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ for the thousand years. And then there will be people who make it through the time of Jacob's trouble. Read about that in Matthew chapter 25. They go into the kingdom prepared for them, mostly the Jews. Question, where in the Bible does it speak of the seven-year tribulation? I can't find any verse regarding the seven-year tribulation. Well, it's not called the tribulation. Okay, but the Bible talks about um, the time and times and dividing of times. That's three and a half years. You, it's a big study. Um, no, oh, can't get into the, all that right now, going to all the scriptures and everything. I read somewhere that Constantine is the one who got rid of pagans in the Roman Empire in order to install Christianity as the official re religion. Have you looked into that? Yeah, it's basically what happened. They were, um, I think it was Sol Invictus or something. It was like kind of the soldier's god, and they would do animal sacrifices to this and these pagan deities and everything else. And he basically merged. It's called syncretism. He merged uh, pagan ideas and biblical names, and he sanctified paganism. And the Catholic Church has been doing that for a while. It's one of their tactics that they conquer people with. Um, Brother Brian, do you watch anything from Peter Schiff? I haven't in a while, but I, I used to see some of his stuff occasionally on the economic type of thing. Um do you think there will be a third world war due to Russia's actions towards Ukraine? Well, that's just one of many possibilities. Um, certainly, there could be. I know Russia, you know, Putin is anxious to get back lands that were taken from Russia. Uh, question, why does Satan hate us so much to go to such lengths to destroy us? Um, because he wants company in hell. He wanted to be God in that. He's not, not able to, so that's why he hates you know, those of us that are saved especially. What are your thoughts on the Ethiopia ET church being the oldest? Uh, never really studied that very much. What do you think might happen to the poked children? Um, there's questions about um, what some of these things might have, um, you know, uh, there might be different batches that some are just placebo, some are much worse than others. Uh, batch 20A and 21A, somebody sent me a thing on that. Any batch ending in 20A or 21A, uh, there's a much higher incidence of death in the virus system. No idea. Um, but putting it into children is criminal. It's disgusting. Hi, Brian. <clears throat> My question is about Peter and Paul and their ministries. Did they teach the same gospel concerning salvation? Yes. Paul says he uh, was to the circumcision and Peter, uncircumcision and Peter, the circumcision. Yes, they preach the same gospel. What you have there, hyper dispensationalists will go to Acts chapter two and they'll say, see the gospel. He's Peter's preaching here. This is the, the gospel that was preached to the Jews and they're in a different body. There's two different bodies of Christ or something. They have the church of the one body, which Paul preached to and it was a different gospel. No, it's transitional. The gospel is not fully revealed until Paul shows up, okay? But they were preaching the same thing. You read about that over in uh, First or Second Peter. I forget which the exact scripture reference, but Paul or Peter says about as also our beloved brother Paul hath showed us, you know. So they were not off doing separate things and preaching different gospels. 
Um, I've dealt with hyper dispensationalists in person. They get they get so screwed up. It's just amazing. Um, question: Ezekiel forty seven and forty eight is that talking of the millennial temple set up for the Jews? Just finished it today. Haven't studied that in a while. I'd have to go back and read through that. Ezekiel's a tough one for me. I've never had an easy time with that one. Question. When you are in a rut as far as faith or being motivated and trying to build up another study to present, do you have a creative process in particular, fasting, prayer, force reading? Um, I just kind of take time off, you know, and just I pray and, you know, yeah, I do that. Um, and whatever else, and just, okay, Lord, what do you want me to preach about next? But usually it's not a problem for me because I get so many people asking me these questions and I can't answer them. And I think that would actually make a good study. <laughs> so um, my wife needs a sign letter of exemption from the vaccination to keep her job or in. Uh, will you sign one for us? How can I send it to you? It's not going to work coming for me because I'm not. You know, they would look at me and say, well, he's not got an official, you know, church and whatever else. Uh, my signature wouldn't mean anything. Question. I would, I really would love to hear your opinion on Paul Washer. I like some of the stuff that he says, but he uses new versions and, you know, he's Calvinistic and whatever else. I don't trust the guy. Um, okay. I'm just going down through here. I'm trying to catch up here. Uh Should a Christian marry someone who took the V? No. Um, it's that bad. It's, you know, it's real bad stuff. Um, question. Everything on earth has a vibration, a frequency. Do you think it's because God spoke everything into existence, the sound and whatever you know, your inner ear vibrates, and that's what you're hearing with sound? Good question. Um It's referring to after the thousand years. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Revelation 22. I was thinking Revelation chapter um, 20. They go, no. The, <laughs> this question and answer stuff gets after my head. Okay. Into eternity. Forgive me, Brother John. Okay. Um, into eternity. Will there be people there and, and whatever else? I've heard a lot of different things, you know, we're going to be settling planets and whatever else. I know Ruckman taught that, that we'll go out and we'll be on different planets and things. I have no idea. That's just pure conjecture in my opinion. I don't really know. The Bible's not very clear on that. Sorry, I didn't get the question right the first time. Um, okay, trying to get... Up here. What does the Bible say about intimacy in the marriage and what is considered lust? Well, the Bible talks about the marriage bed in it's honorable and holy and everything in Hebrews chapter 13. I think it talks about that. Um, and lust is when you are, it's, it's not going to be in the confines of marriage. You're lusting after certain things, be that, you know, um, member of the opposite sex or different things you're coveting you know really strongly so um yeah okay seeing some people that have already asked uh, uh questions here so i'm trying to get to people who haven't asked questions um Question, can you, could you give advice? Um, I have doubted if I'm saved at times, but anytime I sin against God, I feel, just feel so awful and feel like I can't keep going in the Bible prayer as I feel like a failure. Um, as you grow in the Lord, you will feel that. You will have times where you really feel like you failed the Lord and you'll start to doubt and question and things. And there's nothing wrong with that in terms of doubting your salvation. Now, if you're not getting anything done, you know, Paul writes about, in Second Corinthians chapter 13 about examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. So you're examining yourself. You're saying, I'm sh did I really get saved? Did I, you know, and Lord, I'm sorry I did this thing, but I still feel rotten. You know, and 
there's nothing wrong with that. The Christian life is a life of repentance. And you're going to question some things now and then. You're going to feel like you're not saved. But, you know, the Bible's pretty clear how to be saved. So just get back to that and say, did I do that? Well, yes, okay. And I'm going to read my Bible more and get back with the Lord. Get back in fellowship. Um, Okay, just kind of trying to get down here to the bottom. Question, are you still considered married if you have a state marriage license? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to say, oh, you know, anybody who has a state marriage license, license isn't really married. People do dumb things a lot, you know. Um, I don't believe in state marriage licenses. I think that it's good to get away from that if you can. But uh, I'm not going to say people are lost or, you know, not really married if they have a state marriage license. So. These vax people, uh, should I even bother rebuking them for their mockery of God? Deal with us at work and they all mock Jesus and holiness. It feels almost pointless to say anything. Most of it will be pointless. I think it does affect the brain. It's a shame. Um. Christians who took the V, are they going up in the rapture? That's between them and God. I don't know. I don't know why anybody that's saved would have taken it, quite frankly. Um, has there ever been any times when where you've gone through so much stress or trauma that your sins start to come up again? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can backslide, you can get messed up, and you can do things out of anger towards the Lord. Uh, it's not right, but yeah. Um, question: If you want, if you went to Jesus and confessed with your heart, but not by mouth, are you still saved? Um, well, it, you know, you get the arguments there. Of, you know, what if uh, somebody's deaf or they're mute or they're, you know, not deaf, but if they're mute, and you can't speak and whatever. Then what do you do and all this stuff? The Lord knows. The Lord knows. You you don't have to say it perfectly or this is a specific prayer that you have to pray and whatever else do you understand that you're a sinner you go to the bible you say i believe the bible is god's word i believe what it says how to be saved um, i know i'm a sinner i've done really stupid things and, and you just pray silently or whatever else you, you know, lord please save me or whatever and, you, and he'll give you the opportunity to confess him before men and he'll make it very plain whether you're saved or not um so Okay. All right. All right, I'll just. Okay. Question is missing your past life at times and missing sins. I know it, it is a sin, but does it mean I'm not true? I'm truly not saved. Um, it's getting there because it's it's dangerous to mess with that stuff and say I really missed things from my past or whatever else um but you know early on you might have some faults of that but as you get older in the lord you just look back at your life and say oh that was so stupid why did i do that stuff <clears throat> question what is your advice for a young single guy going into some form of ministry that has a rough past like drug addiction sex before marriage um wait wait for a while uh, do a lot of study spend a lot of time you know in sanctification don't rush into the battlefield before you're ready for it because quite frankly you go into ministry too soon as a young man you will be slaughtered on the battlefield because a lot of young guys you go into it and they don't understand all the head games when I mean, you're dealing with the roman you know army here and i mean that okay and these people are experts at messing with your head and i have dealt with jesuits and i have dealt with catholic priests and in person, okay, and online, and I've had letters written to me and all kinds of stuff over the years, and those people can play head games like you wouldn't believe. And I've dealt with Baptist pastors and with other people in Baptist churches, and in person, people walking up to me in a store, and I start talking. I mean, even here in the middle of nowhere, I've had people confront me in stores and whatever else, 
and I'm thinking, okay, you know, I, they'll be in the store and I walk in and I see them, they look over at me and, and then they just, you know, make their way over to me and whatever else. They know who I am, you know, and they'll start playing these little head games with me and they'll smile and everything. Hey, I just have a question about you. Are you a Christian or whatever, you know, playing it. And pretty soon we're getting into this really weird head games being played and things. If you're not ready for that stuff, you really need to study for a while, especially if you've had some pretty messed up stuff in your past. So, um, so uh, that's all I'm going to be answering for now. Um, so I just thought I'd do a quick, couple quick ones there, um, answers to questions. But getting back to the original point of this video, um, if you're a heathen out there and you've watched probably signed off a long time ago, but if you're skipping to the end here, um, if you actually study what Bible-believing Christianity is and actually read, pick up a King James Bible, don't mess with the other ones, pick up a King James Bible and actually read it. I mean, this is the greatest book. This is the most printed book in world history. Okay. Um, pick it up and read it, and you will see a very different thing than uh, the Catholic system. And if you're heathen, Please, please stop calling Roman Catholicism Christianity, because it's not. Okay, so that is going to be it. Thank you to everybody out there for your um, friendship, for your support of the ministry here. And uh, we'll see what we have coming up in future videos. Um, so we will see everybody in the next study. And uh, get out there and witness to a heathen. Okay. And uh, let the heathen know that uh, we're not the enemy in terms of wanting to kill them or whatever else. That's Rome. And we need to really make sure that we stand firm against Rome. All right. That's been our ancient historic enemy. We are in that under that fifth kingdom rule. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. And Roman Catholics. Um, it's a great time to witness to Roman Catholics because they've lost a lot of faith in their church. I've seen trad cats and they're just they're fighting with Pope Francis over this this uh, uh, mass thing. They want to do the Latin mass and Pope Francis is saying no, it, it alienates people. It needs to be in the common language of the common people. And these traditional Catholics are going, oh, you know, this is just blasphemy. Uh, and say, you know, if you guys are the real church, uh, why did you get shut down? What was that whole interdict all about? Why do you have a Jesuit Pope, by the way? You know, I love to to make some. You know, kind of like Paul did with the Sadducees and the Pharisees. You know, he goes in and he says, of oh, the hope of the resurrection, I'm brought in question here today. <laughs> because the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. The Pharisees do believe in it. You go into the Catholics and you say, hey, um, you know, what's the deal with the Jesuits here? You guys, you know, why did the, the one pope there in the, I think it was in the 1800s sometime, he banned, you know, banished the Jesuits. Maybe you should do that again. So um, let's be, let's have some interesting angles to how we witness to people. So that is going to be it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.